Let's look at another situation where we use multiple alleles. And in this case, we're going to look primarily at incomplete dominance, but remind ourselves that multiple alleles can be used for both incomplete dominance and codominance. So once again, multiple alleles are used in both codominance and incomplete dominance. So whenever you have more than one dominant trait, or you have more than one recessive trait, we are going to use superscripts added to the allele to identify those traits that may be more dominant or more recessive. So when we use the capital letter R and the superscript E, we know we are either dealing with a codominant or an incomplete dominant situation. So incomplete dominance is a situation where the genetic inheritance is a blending of the two traits to create the new phenotype. So if we have a blue trait and a white trait and we combine the blue and white we get the faded blue trait. You can't see the blue anymore, you can't see the white anymore, you do get a blending for the new combination. So think of this as we were mixing paint. And if you take red paint and white paint and you blend them together to create pink paint, once you have that pink paint, you cannot distinguish the red from the white any longer. They are not there, but they are blended to create the new outcome. So complete dominance, we have a blue dominant, a recessive yellow, and the blue comes out with the blue masking the yellow. With codominance, we had codominant blue, codominant yellow, and we end up with an offspring that shows both traits in some form. In complete dominance, we're going to take the dominant blue trait and the dominant yellow trait and we're going to get that blended combination of blue and yellow making a green offspring. So what we're looking at with incomplete dominance is we are actually blending the two traits together to get the outcome of the new phenotype. So one example of uh, incomplete dominance is the long-tailed cat, the Manx cat, and we get stubby-tailed cats. So long-tailed cats are dominant, and we're going to use the allele T, capital T, for tail, and the superscript L for long. So the genotype for long-tailed cat would be capital T superscript L, capital T superscript L. Manx cats have no tail. These no-tailed cats have an allele of capital T for tail, and the superscript M tells us it's Manx having no tail. So the genotype for a Manx cat would be capital T superscript M, capital T superscript M. When we combine a long-tailed cat and a Manx cat, we end up with the genotype TLTM, and this gives us actually a stubby tailed cat, a blending of the long and no tail to get this stubby tailed cat for our new phenotype. And just as with codominance, we can do incomplete dominance in the Punnett square. And if we were to cross that long tailed cat and the Manx cat, we have a TLTL crossing with a TMTM. The two TLs get segregated on the top, and the TMs get segregated on the left, and we see that all of the offspring are TMTL, meaning all the offspring are going to be stubby-tailed cats. So when we cross that long-tailed cat and the Manx cat, the cross is TLTL by TMTM. We segregate the TLs on the two columns on the top. TL on the left, TL on the right. The TMs get segregated for the top row and the bottom row, and all of the outcomes again come out TLTM, stubby tailed cats. The genotypic ratio is the homozygous for long first is zero, the heterozygous for TLTM, four, and the homozygous for Manx, TMTM, 
on the right for a genotypic ratio of 0 to 4 to 0. The phenotypic ratio long to stubby to Manx is also 0 to 4 to 0, with the heterozygous phenotype being in the middle. For another example, we're going to cross a long-tailed cat with a stubby-tailed cat. And in this situation, the two TLs for the long-tailed cat get segregated across the top, and the TL and TM get segregated on the left. The top two offspring are both long-tailed cats, TL, TL. The two bottom offspring are stubby-tailed cats, TL, TM. So our genotypic ratio is 2 homozygous for long, 2 heterozygous for stubby, and 0 homozygous for manx. So our phenotypic ratio is 2 long, 2 stubby, 0 manx, 2 to 2 to 0. Another example of incomplete dominance are carnations. Carnations can be red, they can be white, or they can be pink. The red carnation is the dominant trait. We're going to choose the capital letter C for carnation and the superscript R for red. For the genotype CRCR, we have a red carnation. For a white carnation, we're going to use that same letter C. The superscript W, since this is a incomplete dominant situation, that, white mean, that W means white and the genotype would be CW, CW. So a pink carnation would have the genotype CR, CW. So using a Punnett square to display this outcome, we would cross a red carnation and a white carnation. The red carnation has a genotype of CR, CR. The white carnation has a genotype of CW, CW. We segregate the alleles for the red carnation across the top, CR over the first column, CR over the second column. We segregate the alleles for the second carnation, the white carnation on the left, CW for the top row, CW for the bottom row. All of the offspring come out as pink, CR, CW. When we look at this in terms of the genotypic and phenotypic ratios for this situation, the homozygous red, CRCR, is 0. The heterozygous for pink is CRCW. We have 4. And the homozygous for white is CWCW. There are 0. The phenotypic ratio of the offspring for this situation, red, 0, pink, 4, white 0, a phenotypic ratio of 0 to 4 to 0. So let's look at one more example. We're going to cross two pink carnations. So in this case, the cross is CRCW by CRCW. Segregating the alleles for the first pink flower goes across the top, CR over the first column, CW over the second column, for the second pink carnation on the left, CR for the top row, CW for the bottom row. And in this case, when we do the cross, we end up with one red flower, two pink flowers, CRCWs, and one CWCW white flower. So our genotypic ratio is homozygous red, 1, heterozygous pink, 2, homozygous for white, 1. And the phenotypic ratio is 1 red, 2 pink, 1 white, a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. Now some other examples of incomplete dominance are snapdragons, where you have white and red flowers getting pink flowers, roses, also red and white making pink, and then chinchillas, black chinchillas and white chinchillas give you a gray chinchilla, if you pet that chinchilla fur, you will actually see individual white and black hairs, making it have that gray appearance.